Hi, welcome to our uh, Pharma Topics channel. Uh, the, in, the, we are going, we are seeing uh, the eighth semester Pharmacology three. In this uh, video, we are going to see about uh, Unit five, which is related to the toxicology. Here we are going to see about definition and basic knowledge of acute, subacute, and chronic toxicity studies. Uh, definition and basic knowledge of uh, genotoxicity, carcinogenicity, teratogenicity, and mutagenicity. The general principles of treatment of poisoning and clinical symptoms and management of barbecue, barbecue rates, morphine, organophosphorus compound, lead, mercury, and arsenic poisoning. So let us uh, see what it is. So what are toxicity studies? Basically, the toxicity studies are essential to study the influence of toxic effects of new chemical entities, the pharmaceutical preparations, and medical devices. Actually, the guideline is uh, the toxicity studies has to be performed in at least two species. One should be a rodent and one should be a non-rodent. Similar toxic effects between species could reveal more physiological, uh, more uh, reveal common physiological mechanisms which are likely to be present in the human studies. Homogeneous or inbred strains has to be avoided in toxicity studies. The different types of toxicity studies include acute toxicity study, subacute toxicity study, subchronic toxicity study, chronic toxicity study, and special toxicity studies such as teratogenicity, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. So let us see what are the guidelines for toxicological research. A set of inter internationally accepted specifications for testing of chemicals are regulated by Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development for Toxicological Research, that is OECD guidelines. So, what are rodents which are used in experimental pharmacology? They are mice, rats, guinea pigs, and hamsters. So, what are the non rodents used in experimental pharmacology? They are rabbits, ferrets, dog, cat, swine, mini pigs, and non human primates. What are the laboratory conditions adopted in toxicological research? The test animals, usually rodents, are preferred, and non rodents are used depending on the regulatory requirements. Housing and feeding conditions. Animals uh, should be placed in one cage. Uh, temperature should be between 22 uh, plus or minus 3 degrees centigrade. Uh, there should be a relative humidity of 30 to 70 percent. And light dark cycle should be 12 hours. And a bedding, uh, sterilized paddy husk. Feed should be uh, pellet feed. Add libitum water and watch water uh, as essential. The females should be nulliparous and non-pregnant. So they should not be pregnant before also. They would have not given uh, rise to offsprings. That is called nulliparous. Uh, preparation of animals, uh, it has to be acclimatized uh, for a minimum of one week before starting the study. Identification of groups, markers or tattooing etc. Uh, in the toxicological research, they use some groups as satellite groups. It helps in understanding of uh, pharmacokinetics of the toxic agent reversibility of the toxic effects or delayed onset of toxicity. We will see what it is when we go through it. Sentinel groups, it includes limited number of animals, 5 per 6, in order to study the presence of any disease causing agents in the laboratory environment as they are more susceptible to the disease causing agents. So, this is the outline of toxicology uh, conditions. What are the observations in toxicity studies? Their body weight, food consumption, toxic response data by gender, nature, severity, and duration of the clinical observations, changes in the skin, fur, mucous membrane, uh, autonomic activity, changes in the gait, posture, response handling, as well as presence of clonic or tonic uh, movements, stereotypes, bizarre behavior, hematology, biochemistry, urinalysis. Terminal body weight, organ weights, organ body weight ratios, necropsy and histopathology findings. Uh, if available, uh, ADME that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination data. For animals killed preterminally, that is moribund, the rationale behind the decision should be reported. For animals found dead during the study, the cause of the death should be recorded. And they usually observe three things no observed adverse effect level. NOAEL, low observed adverse effect level, LOAEL, and benchmark dose in the acute toxicity studies.
what are the preferred routes of administration of the new drugs for toxicological research the preferred routes of administration are oral dermal inhalation and the choice of the route of administration depends upon the physical and chemical characteristics of the test chemicals for example if it is a gaseous substance it could be given by inhalation route why rats or mice are preferred for toxicological research rats or mice have been preferred for experimental as experimental models because they are relatively uh, have a shorter lifespan they are widespread use in pharmacological and toxicological studies availability of sufficiently characterized strains as a consequence of these characteristics a large amount of information is available on their physiology and pathology young health adult animals of commonly used laboratory strains such as wistar or spray dolly uh, balpsi mice swiss albino mice they can be used in research the guidelines for the research and the guideline numbers are displayed in this slide acute toxicity studies this is a fixed dose procedure the guideline is 420 oral toxicity testing and the guideline 423 is it is acute toxic class method guideline 425 is up and down toxic procedure these are all oral acute toxicity studies acute thermal toxicity guideline is 402 acute inhalation toxicity is 403 then repeated dose uh, toxicity studies they are dosed daily acute toxicity they will give one dose repeated means they will give daily if it is for 28 days it is subacute toxicity studies uh, oral subacute toxicity studies guideline is uh, 407 thermal is 410 and inhalation is 412 and subchronic toxicity studies are conducted for 90 days repeated dose toxicity studies the guideline for oral is uh, 408 and for thermal toxicity uh, the guideline is uh, 90 days and chronic toxicity studies the guide repeated dose toxicity studies the guideline is 452 it is for 12 months that it is dosed continuously there may be a joint chronic toxicity and carcinogenicity studies which is for 12, uh, 24 months or 2 years the guideline is 453 then there are genotoxicity studies uh the guidelines are uh, bacterial reverse mutation test that is ames test guideline uh, 471 mammalian cell gene mutation test uh, guideline 476 in vitro mammalian cell mutation uh, test using thymidine kinase guideline is uh, 490 no need to remember all the genotoxicity studies whichever is convenient for you that you can remember then in vitro te- in vivo test for genotoxicity test for gene mutation that is transgenic uh, rodent somatic and uh, germ cell mutation assay guideline is 488 chromosomal aberration test 475 rodent dominant lethal assay uh, the guideline is 478 mouse heritable translocation assay 475 and there are indicator tests as uh, genotoxicity studies the gui- that is in vivo mammalian alkaline comet assay assay that is guideline 489 and there are teratogenicity studies there are four teratogenicity studies one is prenatal development toxicity the guideline is 414 two generation reproduction toxicity study 416 reproduction and development toxicity test 421 extended one generation toxicity study 443 let us see about acute toxicity studies the acute toxicity studies refer to exposure of single dose and observing for different hours and uh, that is for 24 hours and then followed by 14 days the acute toxicity studies provide appropriate dose for the repeated dose studies and helps in determining the dose of new compounds here they, it is categorized the chemicals are categorized into five categories based on their ld50 that is based on the ld50 dose so you can see this table and you can if possible you can remember it next is fixed dose procedure and the guideline is 420 it involves two tests citing test and the main test citing test involves testing at uh, fixed dose levels uh, it may be 550 300 300 or 2000 mg per kg when possible on the basis of the in vivo or in vitro data the previous data in the absence of uh, such information the dose will be 300 mg per kg uh, then uh, from this study the main test will be one dose will be selected for the main study 
a period of at least 24 hours will be allowed and uh, the animals will be absorbed for 14 days. Next is acute toxic class method 423. Uh, this method is an alternative to replace the oral LD50. Only three animals uh, per gender per step is used at any step of the defined dose levels. It involves two to four steps. No further testing is uh, required. Whether uh, additional three animals should be tested, uh, it depends upon the higher or the lower dose level morbidity or mortality data. The next is up and down procedure 425. It involves uh, a limit test uh, which includes five animals. Uh, first step is administration of uh, a limit dose 2, 2 gram that is 2000 mg per kg or 5000 mg per kg. If the animal survives, two more animals are administered the same dose. If both the animals uh, survive, the test is terminated. If one animal dies, then another two animals are sequentially administered the limit dose. The dosing is continued till three animals survive or the three animals die. The LD50 of the test is above the limit dose if three animals survive and below if the limit if the three animals die. The main test includes 6 to 15 animals. And the first step is uh, the limit dose is 175 mg per kg. Uh, the same uh, sequential procedure is uh, followed here. It is continued until three animals die or three animals survive. The next is acute dermal toxicity study. Uh, it is the same uh, test condition. And, uh, totally 10% of the area, total body surface area is selected, 4 cm into 4 cm. And it is uh, covered with uh, porous uh, gas dressing, non irritating tape, and it is absorbed for 24 hours. There, there, it includes uh, two uh, studies. One is a range finding study, different dose levels, uh, different ranges are administered. Then the main study from this one dose will go for the main study. It will be observed for skin, fur, eyes, mucous membranes, respiratory changes at 30 minutes, 2 to 6 hours, 24 hours, and thereafter for a total period of 14 days. Next is acute inhalation toxicity study. So this involves administration of the gaseous material or a vaporous material uh, using uh, a special equipment where uh, the animal can uh, peep its uh, nose only. The, you can administer the drug only to its nose. The nose only exposure is very useful. It is administered for 6 hours in rats. If mice is used, it should not exceed 4 hours. There are two studies in this. One is a traditional study. So, where uh, it is administered for nearly uh, 4 hours, either nose only or whole body cha exposure chamber. At, and uh, three dose levels are tested. The next is uh, concentration time protocol. Uh, it involves uh, two things. One is sighting study. Uh, 10 animals are administered. Uh, uh, multiple uh, times the dose is administered at 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes and uh, one dose will go for the main study. The observations uh, include mortality, and the uh, nature of mortality, severity, time of the onset of uh, adverse effects, necropsy and histopathological findings. Then repeated dose uh, toxicity studies, it includes subacute, subchronic and uh, chronic toxicity studies. They will be observing the no adverse effect uh, observed adverse effect level or low observed adverse effect level. So, for oral it is mg per kg, for inhalation it is uh, mg per liter per 6 hours per day. Subacute toxicity uh, uh, guidelines it is a 407 oral toxicity guidelines. At least uh, 10 animals are used, 5 uh, female and 5 male. There will be one uh, satellite group uh, to record the adverse effects uh, or reversibility of adverse effects, persistence, delayed occurrence of toxic effects for at least 14 days post treatment that is after 28 days. Then skin toxicity studies, uh, it was uh, performed in rat, rabbit or guinea pig, the guideline is 410, inhalation toxicity, subacute toxicity study 412, uh, each group consists of 5 male and 5 female. Uh, in case of uh, inhalation toxicity studies for a period of four weeks. Then subchronic uh, toxicity studies, it is for 90 days oral toxicity study in the rodents. Uh, it includes uh, 20 animals, 10 female and uh, 10 male. 
additional uh, satellite group of uh, 10 animals that is 5 per gender uh, it is used to record the potential reversibility or persistence of any toxic effects after the 90 days then oral toxic study in non rodents so it's a special guideline uh, 409 it is used in uh, non rodents uh, usually the beagles are used other species uh, swine uh, mini pigs are also used at least eight animals four per gender is used additional satellite group of eight animals is also allowed then dermal toxic studies it in uh, in a rat rabbit or guinea pig it is uh, administered for 90 days then inhalation toxicity study in the rodents for 90 days the guideline is 413 each group consists of 10 male and 10 female uh, they are exposed to the test chemical for 6 hours per day uh, total duration is for 13 weeks that is at least 90 days animals may be may also be exposed for 7 days per week when testing a chemical that is likely to be retained in the lungs a satellite group of 5 males per gender is a per concentration is allowed then chronic toxicity guidelines there is 4 5 2 the, it is same but it is administered for uh, uh, greater than 3 months that is around 6 uh, 6 to 12 months 12 months usually it is for one year here there is an additional group called uh, sentinel group uh, the number of animals is 50 animals uh, per gender with uh, the provision for interim kills satellite group and the sentinel groups the study design may also include one or more interim kills uh, that is some animals are killed at third month some animals are killed at sixth month and additional groups of animals may be included to accommodate this then the Sometimes the carcinogenicity studies may be clubbed with the chronic toxicity studies. It is same, uh, number of animals is uh, 50 per uh, gender, uh, same satellite uh, interim uh, kills are allowed. Uh, the duration is for 24 months. Then the special toxicity studies include genetic toxicity studies. The genotoxins can cause uh, mutagenesis, carcinogenesis, or teratogenicity. Mutagenicity it just changes the sequence of the gene that is mutation some mutations include uh, insertion deletion duplication rearrangement of chromosomal segments gain or loss of chromosomal number the genotoxicity is actually a broader term it includes mutagenicity dna damage dna strand breaks and dna adduct formation well, let us see the tests for uh, genotoxicity and mutagenicity. The first is a bacterial reverse mutation test. The guideline is 471. It is the famous AIMS test. In the description box also, I will give the playlist of toxicology and AIMS test. Go through it. The bacterial reverse mutation test is very commonly used. And the strain used is Salmonella type murium. The principle, Actually, the bacterium have point mutations. It is lacking histidine and tryptophan such that they cannot grow in the medium unless supplied with histidine or tryptophan. But if the chemical which is tested, it induces a mutation that it becomes his positive, then it can grow in the absence of histidine also. So, the confirmation of the growth of uh, Salmonella confirms it is uh, doing some mutation to the DNA for the cells under which it is tested the next is mammalian cell mutation test using the same principle hprt or xprt genes here the cell lines used are chinese hamster ovary or lung v79 fibroblasts unlike the aims uh, assay this test is a forward mutation test because the mutation inactivates the function of the gene rather than reversing that is the cells will not grow unless uh, otherwise it is if it is mutated it will not grow the next is uh, in vitro mammalian micronucleus test usually in the cancerous cells micronucleus additionally is formed to test this they use uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization the cell lines used are v79 uh, chl l5178 y tk6 HEPA RG, HEP G2, a primary uh, Syrian hamster embryo 
cells. In vitro, in vivo tests for uh, genotoxicity, uh, they are transgenic uh, rodent, somatic and germ uh, cell mu gene mutation assays. The guideline is 488 and mammalian chromosomal aberration test. The drug is administered. Uh, then the organs are taken, the cells are, the DNA is extracted, then it is studied for the mutation. Then the rodent dominant uh, lethal assay, mouse heritable translocation assay. There is one genotoxicity test called indicator test. It is in vivo mammalian alkaline comet assay. The guideline is 489. The new, the actually the DNA becomes comet shaped in this if it is causing geno toxicity. So, the categories of teratogens as per FDA guidelines are 5. One is category A. These drugs are proven to be safe in animal studies and further established as safe in the woman. Category B, they carry the fetal risk was evident in animal studies but that was not proven in the woman in the first trimester. Example, proof and endomethacin. Category C, the no studies have been performed in animals and women and prescribed only when the benefits outweigh the risk to Cutus, that is fluconazole rifampicin. Category D, is the risk asso is associated with the drug is high. However, its use is justified in certain life-threatening or severe diseases where other drugs are not working. For example, amiodarone, amitriptyline, propyl thiouracil. Category X is a fetal anomaly was evident in both animal and human studies and contraindicated in women who are likely to become pregnant or pregnant. Diethyl stilbosterol, liflunomide, isotretinoin, etc. The next is uh, teratogenicity studies. It is prenatal development uh, toxicity. The guideline is 414. Uh, the rodent species preferred is rat. Non-rodent species preferred is rabbit. The test compound is administered to the pregnant uh, animals from implantation. To one day prior to delivery. Uh, then uh, uh, before delivery, one day prior to delivery, it is uh, killed. Uh, it is checked for the uterine contents and the fetus is also examined. And then all the organs will go for histopathology and necropsy studies. The fetuses uh, will be uh, examined for soft tissue and skeleton alterations. That, that's why the study is called prenatal. Then the two generation uh, reproductive uh, toxicity study which is a 416 here the uh, generation of males is uh, P and generation of females is also P. The male generations will uh, both the generations will be administered the test compound. The male generations uh, will be observed for the spermatogenic cycle and uh, sperm uh, morphology and motility will be checked. Female generation uh, will be uh, checked for the pregnancies. Uh, mating behavior and uh, the F1 generation will also be checked for the weaning behavior. Then they will go for F2 generation. Uh, the clinical observations uh, include uh, male and female reproductive uh, uh, toxicology uh, studies and growth and development of the offspring. Then reproduction development toxicity guideline 4 to 1. Uh, here the females uh, should be dosed throughout the study. The males are dosed for a minimum period of 4 weeks. The same observations uh, include uh, the uh, that is uh, the mating period, uh, post mating uh, period, estrus cycle, then the offsprings are checked for the presence of anomalies. The offspring parameters uh, include uh, from that is recorded from the day 0 of the pregnancy. That is uh, the number of uh, pups till births live births and uh, runs that is uh, pups that are significantly smaller than the corresponding control pups then uh, the next is extended uh, one generation toxicity study that is guideline is 443 here it includes it's a cohort study it is having three cohort uh, studies of uh, f1 generation and f2 generation then the but in toxicology, the next important is uh, general principles of treatment of poisoning. It involves identification of the poisoning or the toxicant first. So, it may be a corrosive such as a strong acid or alkali. It may be a irritant, inorganic, uh, non-metallic or inorganic metallic or organic herbal poisoning. Or it may be animal uh, poisoning that is snake venom or cantharides. 
or it may be neurotics that is a cerebral action on the spinal cord action on the cardiac system digitalis and the poisons acting on the periphery that is carbon monoxide and coal gas the presentation of the patient may be fulminant uh, acute uh, chronic or subacute fulminant means it is produced by a massive dose acute means it is produced by a single dose or several small doses taken in a shorter period and the chronic toxicity is produced by small doses taken over a long period subacute it is characterized by a mixture of features of acute and chronic poisoning then they will uh, identify the toxidromes that is anticholinergic syndrome cholinergic syndrome sympathomimetic syndrome and sedative syndromes so the anticholinergic syndromes are caused by antihistamines anticholinergics anti parkins and drugs it includes a delirium with mumbling speech tachycardia dry skin midriasis cholinergic syndrome uh, is caused by organophosphates mushrooms uh, it causes uh, cns depression salivation lacrimation then sympathomimetic syndromes are caused by cocaine amphetamine uh, nasal decongestants and then uh, sedative uh, syndromes are caused by opiates barbiturates uh, clonidine symptomatology includes uh, myosis hypotension bradycardia etc so the clinical evaluation of the poison patient includes ample that is ample history allergies medications past medication problems last meal and drink events that led to the poisoning then toxicological investigations such as the random bedside glucose ecg serum electrolytes liver function test creatinine kinase serum toxin levels and abdominal x ray then first step is stabilization that is abcd intervention the airway any vomitus from the mouth of the poisoned patient has to be cleared by endotracheal intubation or it may be removed with fingers breathing examination of breathing insufficiency and uh, measures has to be taken to improve the breathing circulation the circulation has to be checked pulse pressure uh, blood pressure urinary output has to be checked and uh, the circulation could be addressed by elevation of the bed that is trandelberg uh, position administration of vasopressors and cardiac arrhythmias could be addressed by uh, drugs like antiarrhythmics depression of the cns it is usually assessed by glasgow coma scale and administration of coma cocktail that is dextrose thiamine and naloxone this is the first step then evaluation the patient should be evaluated for uh, uh, the, the drugs may cause hypothermia for example antidepressants barbiturates opiates and uh, the the patient should be kept in warm bath that is 115 degree centigrade or warm blankets could be used some drugs they cause hyperthermia that is oral temperature greater than 1 or 2 degree fahrenheit and uh, they may use cold water bath administration of antipyretics acid base disorders has to be addressed if there is convulsions benzodiazepines iv saline in case of agitation or aggressive behavior, behavior it could be treated with sedatives and hypnotics then movement disorders has to be addressed then electrolyte disturbances such as hyperkalemia hypokalemia hypernatremia hyponatremia and hypocalcemia has to be addressed that is evaluation next is decontamination that is decontamination of the skin the elimination of the unabsorbed poison then the removal of the contaminated clothing washing the affected area with soap and running water decontamination of inhalation exposure then evacuation of the toxic environment of the patient from the toxic environment and provision of supplemental oxygen decontamination of eye exposure removal of chemicals by irrigation of the affected eye with saline or water decontamination of the git it includes emesis gastric lavage catharsis activated charcoal and bowel whole bowel irrigate, irrigation it eliminates the absorbed poison emesis is included by, it is caused by uh, mechanical stimulation of oropharynx or by using ipecac syrup gastric lavage is otherwise called stomach wash they use uh, uh, water or saline uh, potassium permanganate oxidizable poisons sodium thiosulfate for uh, cyanide cases and calcium gluconate for oxalate poisoning active charcoal it, there is a thing called multiple dose activated charcoal 
repeated doses of uh, active charcoal is administered it is very effective uh, when it is given within one hour of ingestion of the toxicant if it exceeds uh, five hours or six hours then it is not useful catharsis it is very appropriate term when it is used in connection with poisoning since it means purification it is achieved by purging the gastrointestinal contents of the poisonous material the two main cathartics used in toxicology include ionic or uh, saline uh, which is uh, magnesium citrate magnesium uh, sulfate and saccharides sorbitol then whole bowel ir irrigation that is whole gut lavage so this includes administration of uh, peg that is polyethylene glycol ELS or polyethylene glycol 3350 it produces uh, voluminous diarrhea to remove the absorbed poison in from the GIT and then elimination it includes a forced diuresis uh, forced alkaline diuresis useful in case of uh, phenobarbitone lithium and salicylate poisoning with dextrose and sodium bicarbonate extra corporeal techniques involves uh, hemodialysis hemoperfusion peritoneal dialysis hemofiltration plasma presses plasma perfusion and cardiopulmonary bypass hemodialysis it is usually considered in those patients who are not responding to standard therapeutic measures it may also be considered as a part of supportive care whether the toxicant is dialyzable if it is non dialyzable they will not go for hemo dialysis then hemoperfusion it is suitable for drugs which are non dialyzable such as barbiturates dapsone paracetamol uh, arteriovenous shunt or double lumen venous catheter is inserted into the patient's vascular tree with a hemoperfusion column then manipulation of urine ph acidic drugs with uh, weak base and uh, weak bases with acidic weak acids urinary alkalinization or urinary acidification specific antidotes could be administered they work by inserting complex formation accelerated detoxification reduce toxic uh, metabolic formation receptor site competition receptor site blockade and toxic toxic effect bypass there may be antidotes uh, for drugs astaminophen with astelcystine uh, benzodiazepine antidote is flumacenil beta blockers uh, glucagon digoxin digoxin antibodies and isoniazid pyridoxine for chemical agents organophosphorus compounds the antidote is anticholinergics cyanides it is cyanides antidote package sodium nitrate sodium thiosulfate and amyl nitrate for gases for carbon monoxide oxygen is the antidote for nitrogen oxide methylene blue is the antidote heavy metals for iron toxicity desperioxamine is the antidote copper is a deep enzylamine for lead zinc edta is the antidote arsenic mercury antimony cadmium gold bismuth poisoning dimercoprol or ball is the antidote then nursing and psychiatric care because after because the, the poisoning may be deliberate or intentional there is some psychiatric effect on it so a yeah, nursing and psychiatric care counseling is essential in order to prevent the recurrence of suicide ideation once the patient has been discharged so let us see some uh, the examples which is given in the syllabus one is barbiturate poisoning it is it may be acute or chronic the acute barbiturate uh, poisoning includes slurred speech ataxia lethargy uh, hypoxia hypothermia and cutaneous bullet these are the symptoms chronic barbiturate poisoning uh, it is associated with the development of tolerance the dose of the barbiturate uh, for its effect increases abrupt withdrawal results in anorexia tremor insomnia cramps seizures the barbiturate poisoning is usually handled with gastric lavage preferably with a large bore double lumen uh, tube uh, within uh, 12 to 24 hours of uh, ingestion activated charcoal can be used uh, over dose to patients multiple dose activated charcoal has to be shown to be effective post alkaline diuresis is said to be particularly useful in phenobarbitone poisoning hemodialysis in barbiturate elimination hemodialysis or charcoal hemoperfusion is also used supportive measures include oxygen intubation assisted ventilation and iv fluids withdrawal may be treated by reinstitution of phenobarbitone and a program of gradual reduction over 3 weeks then opioid poisoning in general most opiates are readily absorbed from the ga tract 
and also can be administered by subcutaneous intramuscular or intravenous injection. Its metabolites are also active. The duration of the opiate varies from 2 hours for some opi opiates, pentazosin, pethidine, 4 hours for morphine, codeine, heroin, and for 8 hours, methadone, buprenorphine, norphine, and it, it is within 1 hour, fentanyl, alfentanyl, sufentanyl. Acute poisoning, it's, it causes a triad of coma, pinpoint pupil, and respiratory depression. Uh, such cases uh, may be due to therapeutic overdose or accidental overdose in addicts or deliberate overdose that is suicidal. Chronic poisoning, uh, usually uh, they can find uh, the pointers which indicate opiate addiction, unusual mood swings, periods of a depression alternating with euphoria, withdrawal from the family, friends and social activities and long hours of unexplained absence from the home. Diagnosis, the needle marks, thermal scars, evidence of hypoglycemia, hypoxia, it may be detected by the radioimmunoassay. Uh, gas chromatography or HPLC. Treatment re establishment of vital functions that is ABCD intervention, elimination of the poison with gastric lavage followed by administration of sodium sulfate. If, if opioids have been ingested through the oral route, emetics can be administered. Respiratory depression can be reversed by specific antidotes like naloxone or naltrexone. Then organophosphorus compound poisoning. And there are many pesticides. Uh, here I have given the list of pesticides which you can go through and there are some insecticides which are powerful inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase which is responsible for hydrolyzing the acetylcholine. So this leads to accumulation of acetylcholine and continuation of stimulation of local receptors. The toxicokinetics involved involves it may be absorbed by transdermal, transconjunctival, inhalational or through the GI mucosa. Manifestations usually begin within few minutes to few hours but may be delayed up to 12 hours or more in case of certain insecticides or pesticides. Acute poisoning involves, uh, the, you can remember the symptoms with the code word sludge that is salivation, lacrimation, urination, diarrhea and uh, GI distress and emesis. Nicotinic effects include uh, fasciculations, weakness, hypertension, tachycardia, CNS toxidromes, include restlessness, headache, tremor, drowsiness and an intermediate uh, syndrome may occur uh, one to four, uh, few days after uh, the poisoning. A delayed syndrome may also occur within a month after poisoning. Chronic poisoning, it usually occurs as an occupational hazard in the agricultural uh, farmers. The route of exposure is usually inhalation or contamination of skin. Treatment is acute poisoning is treated with decontamination. If skin spillage has occurred, it is imperative that the patient has to be stripped off and washed thoroughly with soap and water. If ocular exposure, it can be washed with a ringer solution. If these are not available, a tap water can be used. In case of ingestion, stomach wash can be done. Antidotes include atropine, oxines and supportive measures. For oxymes, the commonest is pralidoxime, which is a nucleophilic oxime that helps to regenerate the acetylcholinesterase at the muscarinic nicotinic at CNS sites. Atropine is an anticholinergic drug which addresses the cholinergic adverse effects. Then lead poisoning, the source is Ayurvedic plants, paint, uh, retain in the bullets, ink, automobile, uh, battery casing, battery repair shops then lead pipes, silver, jewelry workers. The toxicokinetics involved, it uh, can be absorbed through all uh, portals for lead poisoning. The lead combines with the sulfhydryl enzymes and causes CNS, cardiovascular toxicity. The symptoms include metallic taste, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, behavioral changes, convulsions and coma. The treatment of acute uh, lead poisoning includes uh, gastric lavage, treatment with laxatives, calcium and the phosphate salts to remove the lead present in the circulation, vasopressors to treat the shock, convulsions can be controlled with diacepam. The lead poisoning chronically can be treated with chelating agents such as EDTA, seizures can be controlled with diacepam, monitor for reduction of intracranial tension and neurological symptoms can be rectified with thiamine.
then mercury poisoning the synonym for mercury is quick silver or liquid silver mercury poisoning may occur due to accidental ingestion of mercury compounds uh, which is present in thermometers medicine gold and silver extraction paints and pesticides the toxic drums of acute mercury poisoning include uh, which is inhalation uh, dyspnea fever cough blurred vision ingestion of mercury causes colic pain vomiting diarrhea hematemesis pink discoloration of urine renal failure and pulmonary edema the toxidromes of chronic mercury poisoning include uh, inhalation uh, that is uh, tremors ataxia erythema metallic taste glomerulonephritis and ingestion the toxidromes include dementia colitis tremors the treatment involves uh, removal of the patient from the source of exposure in case of inhalation activated charcoal in case of ingestion supportive measures to treat shock and administration of antidotes antidotes include dimercaprol succimer dimercaptopropane 1 sulfonate and dipenicillamine the next one is arsenic poisoning arsenic is a very heavy metal which is responsible for both acute and chronic poisoning the mechanisms of toxicity include vital organ damage combined with the sulfhydryl groups and hampers the normal cellular metabolism the symptoms of acute arsenic poisoning include a burning lips dysphagia salivation gi discomfort chronic poisoning involves lack of appetite pigmentation of neck and skin brittle nails uh, nephropathy neuropathy jaundice and anemia supportive uh, therapy gastric lavage uh, to remove the orally ingested arsenic iv fluids to address the shock and vasopressors to treat, treat uh, hypotension Antidotes include a chelation with uh, British anti-lubricant. There is dimercaprol, and hemodialysis is advisable for chronic cases where antidotes are ineffective. So it's a very short information of the principles of toxicology. That is Unit Five, which will be very useful for your exam. I hope it will be useful. Thank you for listening. Happy learning. Kindly share this to more of your friends. Kindly subscribe to our Pharma Topics uh, channel. Toxicology playlist also separately available. You can go through that also and make use of it. Thank you for listening. Thank you.